you ever wondered which filament on Amazon is your best everyday use PLA? So have I. So let's check it out. Hello everyone, I am Jason from Zykid.com and I've been looking for a new filament. So I bought 10 different filaments that you can get on Amazon.com and today we're going to test which filament is our new favorite. In order to do this, I thought we should design a new model specifically for this, something I wouldn't mind printing like 10 of, and also something that would be kind of useful. So um, we've got a new model and uh, we're gonna be testing all 10 of these different PLAs with pretty much the same settings. There is one PLA plus in here, so I will be modifying the temperature slightly for that. But uh, let's take a look at all the different filaments we have. And I will put up on the screen down here about what I paid for it at the time that we purchased it. So yeah, let's check it out. This video is not sponsored. All opinions are my own and are shared purely for educational purposes. If you do decide to pick up any of these filaments to try for yourself, we have some Amazon affiliate links down below in the description. They don't cost you any more to use, but they do help support the channel. Now there are way more than 10 brands of filament on Amazon to choose from. I just went with 10 brands that I'd heard of before or been wanting to try for a little while. As you can see here, we're actually using a version two of the model. About halfway through, we decided to make a little change to add up more support to the spindles. The big printer bed of the CR-10S was giving us a little trouble. So if you see some broken spindles in some of the results, it's not the filaments problem. It was a printer issue. It's been several days now and we've gotten all 10 of the different test models printed. As you can see, gray uh, varies quite differently uh, according to your manufacturer. So we have about 10 shades of gray here and uh, they all printed fairly well. We used our CR-10S. The nozzle for all the standard PLAs was set to 212 degrees Celsius. On the PLA Plus, we did bump that to 220, and that seemed to work pretty good for those. So let's take a look at the uh, individual models, and we'll compare how the filaments did. I was really hopeful for the Polymaker Polyterra filament. It uses a cardboard spool, so it's recyclable. It also claims to be a sustainable product that is naturally sourced. And for every spool produced, a tree is planted uh, to give back to the earth, they say. So I was really hoping that this one would work out well for me with my normal settings, but it definitely is gonna take a little bit more tweaking to get it just right. It does have a really cool like matte finish that's a bit shimmery, so it's very unique. It could still be a very decent filament, I think, if I could get my settings dialed in for it. The Overture filament was a fun one. It came in what they called space gray, which was more metallic uh, in color. And uh, it did have the strongest odor of all the PLAs we tested. Very cool look if I was looking for sci-fi terrain or something like that. Um, and it also came on a cardboard scoop spool. It just had a little bit of stringing and a little bit of sagging. 
The Ender Series PLA was all around a decent filament. It had a little more stringing than some of the other filaments, at least at my settings, but all in all good surface quality and not a bad price either, um, coming in just under $20. I was quite pleased with the Duramic PLA Plus. It printed very cleanly, had almost a satin finish, very little stringing or surface problems with it. We printed it a little hotter at 220 degrees, but a very good PLA Plus, and it was only $21.99, so cheaper than the other PLA Plus that we purchased for this test. Now the Anycubic was the filament that surprised me the most. It was the cheapest one on the list and I did not have very high expectations for it. However, it performed better than most other filaments. It uh, had very little stringing, good surface quality, and at that price point you just can't beat it. Hatchbox is a well-known name in the industry, and overall it seems like a decent filament. I'd never used it before, but on my testing it came out decently. However, it had a few little pinholes show up in the print, and I'm not sure what was causing that compared to the other filaments. No other filament had that issue when I was printing with it. Seems like a solid filament, uh, minimal stringing, um, no more than any of the other ones. But coming in at $24.99 a roll, I didn't see the benefit of it over some of the more affordable filaments. The Inland PLA just seemed to be a fairly average filament. I did like the cool blue tone of the gray. Um, other than that though, nothing really stood out about it. It didn't fail. Had some stringing. Surface quality was pretty good. A few zits here and there. And at the medium price point, I think it was like $22.50, somewhere around there. It was just um, okay for me. The eSun filament gave us very good results. It was the second PLA Plus on the list that we tested. So we printed this one at 220 degrees Celsius as well. And it gave us very clean finishes, uh, minimal stringing, and uh, overall surface quality was quite good. And the uh, blue color of it was very nice. As well. The Gitech filament was actually the only brand on the list that we'd tried before. In fact, the copper little inserts for the dice are made out of Gitech filament. There was minimal stringing, like almost none, like one of the best performing as far as stringing goes. But some of the details were a little more blobby and the corners seemed to blob out a little bit more with this filament. I think any of those issues could easily be solved though with a few printer setting tweaks. The Sun Lu filament was one of the darker colors of gray that we tested, but the print quality was quite good and it only had minimal stringing. Other than that, a solid performing filament. Guess it's time for us to announce the winner. Um, and by winner, I just mean my favorite filament that uh, I think gives you the best bang for your buck out of the lineup that we uh, picked out here. And I was a little surprised because it was actually the cheapest filament on the list, but it seemed to print the um, just the overall smoothest without too much sagging or too much stringing or any zits or anything like that. And um, it was actually only $17.99 on Amazon. And this is the Anycubic brand. So that was... Um, that one uh, gave me relatively clean results, very little sagging on these overhangs, handled most of the uh, small details quite well, and uh, yeah, it was all in all a decent filament. For the second place, it actually was a PLA Plus filament. This was eSun, which I had read online from several people on Reddit and various places that a lot of people really like eSun. So I was pleased to try it out and see for myself. It is uh, very nice. I also like the color of this one. It's a very middle gray with a, kind of a cool blue tone. And I like that in a gray. I like a more bluish tone. A lot of the other filaments were lighter in color or had a more brown hue. And I really like that blue. So Isan, that was my second one. This one was on the higher price of the list. I think it was actually as high as we went, which was $24.99 a roll. So 
A little bit more expensive, but good results and being a PLA Plus also means that it should be a little more durable. Um, it does feel rather solid, so I'm happy with that one. For third place, I actually um, think this was, yeah, this was our other PLA Plus. And this one also printed fairly clean. It was a little more stringy than the eSun, but again, clean results, seems quite durable, and uh, I, I like the, the finish on the details here. It doesn't have a lot of zits or anything like that. Minimal sagging on the overhangs here. And uh, all in all, seems like a decent filament and a little bit cheaper than the eSun PLA Plus. The runner up was actually the Sun Lu filament. So this, if I were to give it a fourth place, this would be our fourth place. This one had a deeper color. As you can see, it's, it's uh, one of the darker ones out of the lineup. And it, uh, it printed fairly well. It did have a bit more stringing than these other three here, um, at, at least at the settings that we had. Now, some of that could probably be tweaked and refined a little bit. Maybe it needed to be printed a little bit cooler. Um, but all in all, a decent filament. And the color is kind of nice too, being a little bit darker. So if you're looking for a little bit darker gray, that's a, that's a good choice. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. We're hoping to make some more videos like this in the future. So that will really get us going here. Um, if you uh, want to test out this model for yourself, it's one of our free files over at zykit.com. I'll put a link down in the description below and uh, you can head over there. We got all sorts of files and if you uh, pick up any of those, those help uh, support the channel and what we're doing here. So thanks for uh, having a look and uh, we'll see you next time.